In this work, we present a learning-based approach to autonomous exploration of subterranean environments using aerial robots. Subterranean environments present many challenges for autonomous systems as they are often obscurance-filled, visually degraded, GPS-denied, contain difficult terrain, and may be unknown prior to entry. With these conditions in mind, we've developed a method which can propose trajectories which are expected to explore the unknown environment using only recent sensor observations. This reduces dependence on an online map representation of the environment. Furthermore, the proposed learning-based planner infers paths at a fraction of the computational cost of a state-of-the-art sampling-based exploration planner. This method is evaluated in simulation environments and in field experiments, which demonstrate that the model can be trained in simulation and deployed in the field. This work took inspiration from the results obtained by GUSTI, in which deep neural networks were trained using supervised learning to successfully navigate forest trails using visual image inputs alone. The graph-based planner developed by Dang has demonstrated its utility in the successful exploration of numerous real-world subterranean environments. The local planning layer of this planner randomly samples points in a fixed volume around the robot's current position and constructs a graph. Paths within this graph are evaluated according to their expected volumetric exploration gain, as well as path safety criteria, and the best path is chosen. This graph-based planning method is relevant to the learning-based approach presented here, as it is used as the expert, which generates training data for our deep learning-based approach. The learning-based exploration planner presented in this work is developed using imitation learning. The graph-based planner discussed in the previous slide is the expert policy used to generate training data. We also employ dataset aggregation, meaning that during training, the partially trained model is deployed in simulation environments and allowed to explore while receiving feedback from the training expert. The learning-based planner is a set of convolutional neural networks, which take as input images calculated from recent point cloud measurements obtained by a LiDAR range sensor with a max range of 100 meters and a 360-degree horizontal, 30-degree vertical field of view. These images are stored in a buffer, and three images spanning a 1.6 second time window are retrieved for input when the planner is triggered. Example range image inputs are shown on the right. Range images were chosen as model input because the LiDAR sensors can be reliably simulated, and the data are agnostic to illumination conditions. The outputs of the neural networks are predicted scores for paths in each octant around the robot, as well as orientations of straight line trajectories within each octant. A path score is directly related to its expected volumetric exploration gain. Training data were generated by deploying the graph-based expert planner in simulated subterranean environments and recording the best viable paths proposed. It's common in subterranean environments for multiple directions to be feasible and beneficial for exploration. For example, in the tunnel intersection shown on the right, the robot could proceed forward, backward, or into the branch. In order to enable the model to propose multiple distinct possible paths based on the recently received image, the space around the robot is divided into octants, and viable paths within each octant are converted into training labels as follows. For the best path within each octant, a score is calculated based on the path's expected exploration gain. Octants which contain no paths longer than some threshold receive a corresponding score of zero. For each viable path, the angular offsets of the path's orientation relevant to the octant's axis are calculated. The training labels are the path scores and corresponding orientations in each octant. A neural network is trained to reproduce these path scores and orientations based on the most recent range images at the time the planner was triggered. In order to explore larger regions of the state space, the partially trained network is also deployed in the same set of simulation environments. Each time the learning-based planner is triggered, the graph-based expert is also triggered. The path proposed by the expert becomes a training label for the observation obtained by the learning-based planner's action. A schematic diagram of the network architecture used is shown on the left. First, a stack of recent range images is passed to a series of convolutional layers which extract features from the input. These features are then input into three separate subnetworks. One is responsible for predicting orientations of trajectories within each octant, which are defined by horizontal and vertical angular offsets from the octant's axis. The second is responsible for predicting path scores within each octant. A third is a decoder network which is trained to reconstruct the original set of input images. This network is only used during training in order to encourage the extracted features to retain geometric information, but is not used during path planning. The model is trained to minimize the mean squared error between predicted and obtained scores, angular offsets, and the original and reconstructed images. 
First, we present results comparing the learning-based method with the graph-based training expert. All results shown were obtained in environments not used for training data generation. On the right, the top panel shows paths taken by the learning-based planner in three simulation environments, a mesh reconstruction of an underground mine, a square tunnel, and a T-shaped tunnel environment. The bottom panel shows paths taken by the expert in the same environments. Qualitatively, the paths are similar. During these experiments, no collision checking was performed for trajectories proposed by the learning-based method, and all paths were collision-free. A comparison of computation time and exploration rate is also shown. The exploration rate is defined as the amount of volume discovered per unit time. As shown, the learning-based method requires more than an order of magnitude less computation time for comparable exploration behavior. The learning-based planner, after being trained in simulation, was deployed in an underground mine in northern Nevada. In the first experiment, the robot begins outside of the mine. On the left, the range images calculated from recent point cloud measurements are shown, along with the corresponding feasible directions identified by the learning base planner. The feasible direction arrows are scaled by their corresponding scores, with the blue arrow denoting the direction of maximum predicted score. Note that as the robot approaches side passages, paths entering these branches are identified as feasible. However, the predicted score for paths entering these side passages is lower than the predicted score for continuing to explore the main mine drift. In the second experiment, the robot starts within a side branch and proceeds to a T-intersection. The forward direction is identified as a dead end, and the robot turns right into the main drift. The right direction had a higher predicted score because the left direction was partially obstructed. Although this planner was trained in simulation, it was able to successfully navigate the mine tunnel and does so at a fraction of the computational cost of the graph-based expert planner while also relaxing the need for a globally consistent online map representation of the environment. In summary, the proposed learning-based method is able to approximate the local exploration behavior of the sampling-based expert path planner. The direct mapping from sensor measurement to path proposal relaxes the requirement for an online map of the environment. In addition, the learning-based method infers paths at a fraction of the computational cost of that of the graph-based expert. Furthermore, We've demonstrated that the use of range images as neural network input enables models trained in simulation to be deployed in real-world environments. However, the limited time history included in the network input, as well as the network architecture, prevent the model from storing and accessing temporal information. This prevents the learning-based planner from making trajectory decisions which depend on knowledge of previous observations and actions. Since this work was submitted, we have been addressing the learning-based planner's inability to utilize temporal information when proposing exploration paths. To do this, we employ the recurrent deterministic policy gradients method proposed by HES. This variant of deep Q learning is applicable to continuous state and action spaces, as well as to partially observable Markov decision processes, which require the agent to utilize information about previous actions and observations in order to maximize its reward. As before, the input to the model is a series of recent range images. However, a recurrent neural network architecture is used to allow the transfer of information between planner iterations. The reward function used in this approach is designed to encourage safe trajectories beneficial for exploration. Preliminary results are shown below. After initial training, the agent quickly becomes stuck in the test environment. However, after a small number of additional training epochs, the agent is able to consistently receive reward throughout the allotted time, thereby exploring a portion of the environment. Thank you.